Not a good day on the show yesterday, going one and four. Real sorry, guys, that the football has not been better here on the Power Five. As you know, however, over at wagetalk.com, I am number one in NFL since the start of the regular season with client releases, now hitting 70% overall, including nine and two with sides after the Thursday night win with the Falcons. But here on the Power Five, for whatever reason, uh, some of the plays were given out for free here. Uh, both NFL and college have not been getting it done. Still, though, a 117 94 and 5 overall run on the show. I do have one college football play for you here on Friday, followed by a bet for all four MLB divisional series. Go ahead and comment down below with your thoughts on these selections. And don't be shy about smashing that like button if you agree or if you just want to show your support. I appreciate that. Number one, we're going to start in college football where I guess I disagree with a lot of people because I like UNLV minus six and a half against Syracuse. Yes. I do suppose uh, we are betting the Rebels at the top of the market here after they open minus three, but I just think they're the vastly superior team in this matchup. Would not be the least bit surprised to see them win by two touchdowns tonight. Right now, I've got UNLV rated as the best group of five team in the country. Going to be a big home game versus Boise at the end of the month. And here's the thing. With so much focus, what's going on uh, at the quarterback position with UNLV right now due to the NIL, People are overlooking what a great defense this team has. Top 15 in the country in points allowed. I know Syracuse has Kyle McCord at quarterback, the Ohio State transfer, but he's been picked off twice each of the last two games. This is a tough cross-country trip for the Orange, who are playing their first true road game. Remember, they lost to Stanford at home. Offensive line and kicking issues for Cuse could come back to haunt them in this one. I'm laying it with the Rebels uh, as long as it stays under seven. Now, for all this weekend's college football winners, head on over to wt.buzz slash bp. You know where to go. It would be a good idea to get on board for the whole weekend. As I mentioned, I am number one in the NFL so far since the start of the regular season. Number two overall with all football at wagertalk.com. Remember, a three-day all-access pass costs $69, but right now we are offering a seven-day all-access for just $77. That is your best deal right there. No coupon code needed at wt.buzz slash bp. All right, let's talk some baseball. All four LDS get underway on Saturday. Tigers-Guardians is a series where, other than Scooble, I do not think any pitcher is going to be asked to go longer than four innings. Two outstanding bullpens here. Cleveland's slightly better. Uh, while Detroit is a hot team and certainly carries a lot of momentum, I like Cleveland to win this series. The Guardians have the top home field advantage during the regular season. In the American League, they went 50-30 and 30 at Progressive Field during the regular season. They have not played since last Saturday as their final regular season game got rained out. Sometimes a seven-day layoff is a concern, but what's interesting here is the game one price on the Guardians is actually larger than their series price. They are set to face Scooble in games two and then five if necessary. So game one really does seem like a bit of a must win for the guards who stole twice as many bases and hit 23 more home runs than the Tigers this year. Let's also not forget Six of the eight runs the Tigers scored in the wildcard series versus the Astros came with two outs. Two out hitting is so cru crucial in the postseason. We all know that. Uh, Scooble's going to win the Cy Young, but part of me feels Cleveland's closer, Emmanuel Classe, is actually the most important pitcher in the entire American League. He deserves consideration for that award. He posted, Classe did, a .61 ERA with 47 saves in 74 and a third innings of work. Yes, a .61 ERA. You give the ball to Class A with the lead, and the game is over. It's been more than a year since Cleveland lost a game uh, when entering the ninth inning with a lead. So I actually like Cleveland, minus 125, to win this series. My apologies to the Wager Talk home office. Number three, Mets-Phillies. This series was set up by the dramatic come-from-behind win last night uh, by the Mets. Thus, in the brief history of the expanded wildcard format, the team that has won game one has gone on to win the series all 12 times, including 10 2-0 sweeps. I think the Mets are live to upset the Phillies and move on to the NLCS. Would take the Mets around plus 160 to win this series. That way, or pardon me, the way the series has been priced, it simply doesn't reflect what we've seen over the last three months, guys. The Phillies' record since July 5th is exactly 500. Meanwhile, the Mets during that same time went 47-29. and 29. That doesn't even include ousting Milwaukee in the wildcard round. And unlike this, the, the Tigers, the Mets roster, worth believing in, in my opinion. You've got the second best player in the National League, Francisco Lindor. Who knows? Maybe I'll even end up betting on David Peterson in this series. Probably not, but you never know. Yes, I saw he got the save in Game 3. I like the Mets plus 160 
to win that series. Number four, how do we attack this Royals-Yankees series when the Yankees are 2-1 to one favorites and deservingly so, quite frankly? Well, we need to get a little creative. This is the one LDS where an upset would shock me. Kansas City did not do much offensively to get by Baltimore. Scored just three runs in two games. It was enough because the Orioles were completely inept at the plate and poorly managed. Bullpen has been a lot better for the Royals down the stretch relative to how it performed most of the year. But at the plate, I talk about this all the time, Kansas City strikes out a lot more and walks a lot less on the road. The one thing I don't really like with the Yankees in this series, Aaron Boone is starting Carlos Rodon in game two instead of Luis Heal. I think Heal would benefit more from pitching at home. What do I know? Uh, I don't want to lay the price, obviously, on the Yankees to win this series, but I think taking them plus 135 to make it to the World Series would be a solid investment right now. I think the gap between New York and the rest of the American League field is pretty substantial. To, to that point, I have the Yankees power rated as the number two team in all of baseball right now. None of the three AL Central teams, Guardians, Tigers, or Royals, are in my top 12. So Yankees plus 135 to win the AL pennant. If you already don't have uh, anything invested on them, uh, I think it's a good move, uh, the Yankees, to win the next two series. Okay, uh, now for what is, in my opinion, the most intriguing LDS, and that's Padres Dodgers. I've been fairly vocal over the last several months about the Padres and that I think not only are they live to win the NL pennant, but also the World Series. So I like them, plus 115 to beat the Dodgers. This series likely is going to come down to the Padres starting rotation versus the top of the Dodgers lineup. 13 regular season meetings, eight of which San Diego won. Their starters held Dodgers hitters to a 198, 281, 343 slash line. That's batting average, on-base percentage, and slugging. Probably a lot of pressure on Dylan Cease to steal game one Saturday night. But even with the injury to Joe Musgrove, remember San Diego's got you Darvish and Michael King after Cease. The Dodgers uh, staff, by the way, Jack Flaherty's now going in game two. There was a change. Uh, but this Dodgers staff will have the fifth most home runs in all of baseball. That's not good. Uh, give me San Diego here. Let's recap the Power Five, what we had cooking here on Friday. Number one, Friday Night Lights, Friday College Football, UNLV minus six and a half against Syracuse. Number two, as we move to baseball, the LDS. Number two, Guardians minus 125 to win the series against the Tigers. Number three, Mets plus 160 to win the series against the Phillies. Number four, Yankees plus 135 to win the American League pennant. So they have to win two series for us there. Number five, Padres plus plus 115 to win the series over the Dodgers. Go ahead, comment down below with your thoughts on those plays. And please do let me know how you are betting the Major League Baseball playoffs and Friday night college football. I'm going to have the Saturday college football edition of the Power Five out later tonight. So make sure you're subscribed uh, to the Wage Talk YouTube channel. Click that bell for instant alerts. Also, don't forget about the morning wager with Mark Zinno and myself. I think we're going to be talking college football today. And don't forget about that seven-day all-access pass for $77 at wagertalk.com. Get you all of my NFL, college football, MLB, and soccer for the next week. Again, I am number one overall in the NFL this regular season, including an incredible 82% with sides. Nine and two after that one with the Falcons last night. That was fun. All right, that does it for the Friday edition of the Power Five. Smash that like button if you already haven't done so. Until next time, guys, let's catch some tickets.